Hey y'all, Chris from Key Farm. So some of you out there, I'm sure, have seen my Predator 212 inboard boat motor. Here's a picture of it, and I'll put the link across the top of the screen. I encourage you to check it out. It really is pretty cool. But uh, the plan was to take it out of the radio-controlled boat that it's in and to put it in something bigger. But I got to thinking, you know, then I'm going to have a rudder and a prop hanging out the bottom, and I'm going to have to block it up on the trailer or have a special trailer to carry it on. And I kind of thought, man, I don't want to deal with all that. So I got to thinking, huh, what about an outboard Predator 212 motor? Hmm. Maybe. Now, I've seen videos where people take a uh, existing lower unit and put a lawnmower engine on the top, you know, fabricate an engine plate and connect the two shafts. And hey, my hat goes off to you guys because those are some awesome videos and some pretty cool builds. But if you don't have a lower unit of an outboard, you're pretty much out of luck with some of those videos. But hey, nonetheless, pretty cool. So I got to thinking, how could you build one from scratch? And I've been thinking about this for a while. I even asked to borrow dad's boat the other day. Um, the next project is already in the works. It's going to be an outboard motor for a V... Dad, I need to borrow your boat. No problem. For a V-bottom boat. Uh, so you see, I, I was thinking about it even while I was building the other one. And this weekend, I've spent a tremendous amount of time down here at the shop working on it. Oh, wait. The concept video. I just gave it away. It's 85% built. All right, well, look, I was going to go through this whole spiel where I was going to show you what I was doing with this pipe and bearings and stuff, but I messed up and gave it away, and it's 85% built, and we're going to walk around it. All right, y'all, so there is my Predator 212. You see that it swivels. It is on a transom mount. Got a piece of angle right here, welded to another um, piece right there. I got those nuts welded in there, and it's on, it's on there pretty tight. Uh, it's probably going to need longer bolts. Keep in mind, it's still, still a work in progress. And then we have a second piece of angle right here. It bottoms out against that bolt. I may make it bottom out against those. Um, it will raise up. So when not in use, you can pick it up and keep it out of the dirt or the weeds or whatever it may be. All right, then got my engine plate right there. Uh, got one inch bar stock welded to the bottom of the engine plate. Then it goes into two one inch bearings. That's how we get all of our movement right there. And it is smooth. It's going to have a handle coming off of it. Probably put an ear, probably put an ear right here. Have a tiller handle coming off. And uh, have the throttle on the handle. Throttle and steering all on the handle like it should be. Our down tube is going to get gussets in here. It's going to be much more supported than it is. This is... Just welded up enough for fabrication purposes. Uh, like I said, we got a pin in here and a washer. It can't jump out of there. It can't go up or down. All right, got my down tube here. All right, we have to see the sprocket inside. The sprocket is the largest sprocket that would fit in there. It's a 19 tooth. We're going to run 40 chain down to it. Um, we got a bearing on each side, okay? Um, I wanted this bearing here in the tube, but there's not enough room for it and the sprocket in the tube. So, oh, and the sprocket doesn't have set screws in it. So I'm going to have to weld a collar to one side and lock it to the shaft with a collar that's welded to it. Uh, no, folks, this is not the propeller that's going to be on it. I mean, it could be the first time, but that propeller, I bought it because it, well, I liked it. And it's there for visual purposes. Um, all right. Sealing these bearings is going to be the hard part. But I found these rubber sheets at Lowe's the other day. So I'm going to make gaskets that go on uh, this bearing. Uh, we'll put sealant around the bolts. Uh, we got sealant for the end here of the shaft. And we'll seal that. And we'll see how much water actually goes through the bearing. I don't think it's going to be much, but that remains to be seen. 
And then, like most outboards have, we'll put a fin right here. I'll kind of box the front into a V where it kind of sheds water a little bit better. Um, we're going to have to weld up the bottom and probably put a point on it so it protects the prop. Now, I know what you're thinking, Chris, how is the prop going to get enough water traveling behind a 2x4 piece of steel? Well, that's where research and development's going to come in. I'm going to position the prop about halfway up that shaft, and the prop is going to be probably 7 inches, so that's 3 inches wider. It's going to grab water from outside of that, and of course, water's all the time going to be rushing around it. Eh, there's no problem that can't be solved as far as mechanics go uh, in this scenario, so we'll work that out when we get there. Um, I would like this to be belt drive, but if I make it belt drive now and I get water in the tube, you, you got a slipping belt and you're stranded. So it's going to start out chain drive, where at least when I get my daddy out in the middle of the lake, we ain't got to row back. By the way, Dad, I need you on the maiden voyage with me. Father-son bonding time. Oh, see, what else? Got the clutch right there. Got the down tube right there. Swivels. All right, y'all. Questions? Comments? Concerns? <laughs> hey, I got a few myself, but we're going to put it on a 12-foot V-bottom boat to start with and just see what happens. Hey, I'm Chris from Key Farm. Love God, love people, and how's about watching some of these other videos?